poor unloved island never really gets any mention in transit discussions anywhere. It is a place where trains are wide, that's about it. Despite being quiet, I want to take a moment to highlight a programme in the near future that may rank as one of Europe's most ambitious, with a city lies trying to expand its transit network and fix many of the mistakes of its past. It's time to explain the Dart Plus and Metrolink programmes. A proper history of Dublin's railways videos could be something I'd do in the future, but for now, here's the abridged version. As is typical for much of Europe, the early railways were a disorganised effort by a range of competing companies. Around Dublin civically, a big four took shape. The Great Northern Railway connected the city to Ulster, the Midlands Great Western Railway went northwest to Salgo and Galway, the Great Southern and Western Railway covered much of the southern half of the island, and the Dublin and South Eastern Railway took a line south along the coast to Wexford. Efforts would be made over the years to bring these together as a more cohesive network. In 1877, the Great Southern and Western's North Wall extension would bring their line to both the Dockyards and Amiens Street Station, today Dublin Connolly. In 1891, the loop line opened to finally allow trains to cross the city from north to south, and united the big four together at last. The Irish Free State would fully nationalise their territory's railways in 1925 as the Great Southern Railways, a company that would evolve into the CIE in 1945, which still serves as the Republic of Ireland's national public transport operator. Unfortunately, at the same time, Ireland was hit particularly hard by the mid-century decline of rail travel. Many factors, including partition, economic issues, a lack of natural resources, and all of that being exasperated by the Second World War, saw a massive shutdown of railway infrastructure in the 1950s and 60s, it being perhaps the biggest loss of track in Europe. The existence of the CC1, a steam engine designed to run on peat, built as late as 1957, illustrates all of these factors well. Around Dublin, the biggest loss is undoubtedly the line from Harcourt to Bray, a vital commuter line for the city, which closed in 1958. The loss of this commuter route is one that, as we'll see, is something the city has been trying to fix ever since. Also lost over the years include the Dublin and Blessington Tramway in 1932, Dublin's tram network altogether in 1959, including the final closure of the Dublin and Lucan Tramway and the Hill of Howth Tramway, and Broadstone Station in 1961. Railways in Ireland were not in a good place leaving the 1960s, but there was one bright spot. In 1984, the electrification of Dublin's coastal commuter line had finished and the DART was inaugurated, beginning a new era for Ireland and bad puns alike. Initially running from Half to Bray, the service was extended on both ends in 2000s, a branch to Malahide opening in the north, and an extension to Greystones opening in the south. Also at this time, Dublin was willing to give trams a try again. In 2004, the Lewis opened with two lines, red and green. Red is an east-west line, which as of its current completion in 2011, runs from the Docklands to Connolly, through the city centre to Houston, and all the way to the city's southwestern suburbs. The Green Line ran from St Stephen's Green to Sandyford along the same route as for the Harcourt Line. A further extension to Bridges Glen followed in 2010, followed by a northern extension to Broombridge in 2017, which also follows the path of the former Broadstone Line. As one more thing, Dublin's non-electrified local rail services are branded as Commuter, the Northern to Dundalk, Western to Longford and the M3 Parkway, and Southwestern to Port Alloys. That brings us to where we are today, a city that is undoubtedly feeling the pain of past planning decisions, but also trying to move forward. So, what's next? 
Attempt to extend the Dart into a full metro service is something that's been on the docket for a long time. Dart currently shares its tracks with national intercity trains, which obviously hampers some of its capacity. Another reason why the Harcourt line is so missed. Many proposals have been focused on expanding Dart into a full regional commute system and complementing it with a dedicated metro or underground system. Some of these proposals involved having an underground Dart line connecting Houston to Connolly. This has been dropped off the plans, but today this has manifested itself as the Dart Plus and Metrolink programs. To start with the Dart Plus, let's go over the common threads before going over the specifics. The big aim is to expand Dart service on its existing coastal line as well as onto new lines that previously only saw diesel commuter service. These lines will see a grade crossing removal effort. While no Melbourne, this should comfortably improve the reliability and frequency of service on this corridor, along with providing an opportunity for new pedestrian and cyclist friendly crossings over the line. Electrification will be extended over the new route, and a new set of trains, under the Dart Plus Fleet program, will be produced by Alstom on the Extrapolis platform to supplement this new service. 37 trains have been ordered, of which 31 will be fitted with batteries for short runs on non-electrified sections of track. Do note that the plan is still to fully electrify the Dart Plus lines with overhead wires, but the use of battery electric capable trains will allow service to begin before electrification is complete, with the trains being capable of quickly being converted to full electric once ready. On the Dart Plus Coastal South section, the only part of the project that will not be receiving any civic infrastructure improvements, these measures should still mean that the service sees an improvement in service frequency and quality. Coastal North is where things get interesting. The headline is that Dart wants to extend service all the way to Drogheda, including electrification of the line. A new dedicated Dart platform will be constructed at Drogheda, and for frequency, new platforms will also be constructed at Clongriffin and Malahide, so dark trains can terminate there, creating a proportionate decrease in service the further you get from Dublin, and ensuring capacity for other types of services. The other note is with the Half branch, with the current plan being to run the line as a shuttle on quieter times, while maintaining the ability to do a full through service when demand calls for it. As long as the connection is timed effectively with schedules, this shouldn't be a major downgrade, and it does allow for much more frequent service on the greater density of the rest of the line, so this likely is a good trade-off. Dart Coastal North will bring frequent Dart service, vastly improving connections along the coast. With the existing Dart lines extended, we can look to bring Dart service to new lines. The Dart Plus West seeks to take over the current commuter lines to M3 Parkway and Maynooth, with a fully electrified service from this line to Connolly and a new depot at the very end of the line. As part of this plan, a relocated Dockland station, renamed to Spencer Dock, should be better situated to serve the many attractions in the area. That brings us to the Dart Southwest. That brings us to the Dart Southwest, which aims to quadruple track the section from Houston to Park West and Cherry Orchard, enabling the separation of Dart and regular services. This will also see the reopening of Kisshog Station and a new Houston West stop that upgrades this hilariously tiny platform that exists today into a proper station for trains headed onto the Dart West tracks via the Phoenix Park Tunnel. Overall, the Dart Plus, with its creation of new, frequent electrified service both within Dublin and beyond, should vastly improve service within the city and far beyond it. The way the project is split into many different parts that are not dependent on each other for completion should bring a gradual wave of benefits to the city over time, and I really look forward to seeing the Dart Plus come to fruition over the coming years. Now, let's talk about the Metrolink, because for a brand new Metro line, there's a lot to like here. They want the system to be fully automated with four-car trains, enabling a very high frequency on the line. 
No Civic model has been chosen at the moment, but renders show Sydney Metro trains, but green. So it's good news that they aren't going for something super proprietary. It will serve 15 stations, starting at an Estuary Park and Ride station in the north next to the motorway, passing through the major suburb town of Swords and Dublin Airport. It will enter board tunnels to enter the city, serving places like Dublin City University at Collins Avenue, Meta Hospital at Meta, O'Connell Street, Tara Street and its station, and St Stephen's Green before terminating at a Green Line interchange at Charlemont. Going back to the Dart Plus program, it will interchange with the Metrolink at Glasnevin, where Dart West, South West and Metro trains can all stop. As you can maybe notice with the Metro terminating at Charlemont, the original plan for this thing was that the Metro would take over the Green Line on the Harcourt route. This was cut due to the service disruption and complexity of making the line take over the tram would entail. The tunnels south of Charlemont are long enough to allow for easy future extension, but for now, the dream of returning high frequency commute service to the Harcourt goes on. A positive about the Metrolink is its heavy use of cut and cover where possible. Even in the city, virtually every station will be built cut and cover. I think O'Connell Street will be the only exception, which is understandable. All of that is very good news for construction simplicity. These stations also aim to be fairly shallow, good for accessibility, and also allowing for natural light into the trench. The way the stations have skylights on the surface plaza reminds me quite a bit of Copenhagen. Another noteworthy design choice is that a 16th station, Dardis Town, is provisionally designed for easy building as an infill site in the future. This station will be the location of the system's depot, and the site next to it is preserved so that an adjacent station can be built if the area around it develops. Ensuring that depots have passenger stations is an often overlooked aspect of system design planning, so I am glad that Dublin will be taking the opportunity to do so, while also setting the groundwork for a major transit-oriented development district. So looking at all this in perspective, Dublin will implement a major expansion of frequent electrified rail service across the, sensi- across the city in sensible, implementable ways. Light isn't getting more attention internationally as a shame, so I hope this helps to bring the project on the radar of at least some fans out there.